Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? Broadcasting around the world. Well, hello. This is your number one internet radio station. TC Talks, Thursday night, 7.30. Top of the morning to you. <laughs> We're talking all things Irish tonight. Um, that's obviously a saying that nobody's ever said in Ireland. Uh, we've got Niall with us. How's it going? I'm all right, man. Good, good. Rich? Good evening, TC. How are we? I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, yeah, talking about my favourite subject tonight, the home country. Talking about Ireland. Everything about it, because I don't know if anybody's noticed, but um, it's St. Patrick's Day on Sunday. Uh, so apparently that's a big celebration in Ireland and across the world. Um, so we're just going to talk about Irish, everything Irish tonight. Um, talk about what it's like to be an Irishman in England. Um, talk about uh, my experience of being an Irishman in England. Talk about um, the music and the sport um, and anything else we can do. Put a literature in there for for the intellectuals now. Would you would you partake in a bit of that? Yeah, I get to I get to flex my IQ a little bit. That's fine. Yes, that's okay. Yes, because um, yeah, despite what people say, the Irish are known for their intelligence um, and their literature. So it's uh, it'd be good to talk a little bit about that. Not that I know much about that, but the literature side. So I'm I hoping mean, you've done some research this I mean, afternoon. You do have a book out. Oh you? yeah, I do. Yeah. Well, too early, too early. Oh, so too early for too the early book. Right, no, Don't I'll be plugging the book in the first place. I'll save minute. that for a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so um, obviously all the, all the songs tonight are going to be Irish um, or of Irish uh, origin. Uh, and we're gonna, we can't start the show without um, a bit of the Dubliners. And this is Whiskey in the Jar. Enjoy. <laughs> He was counting I first produced me pistol And I then produced me rapier Say stand and deliver For you are a bold deceiver Mushering the blue Money, and it made a pretty penny I put it in me pocket And I took it home to Jenny She sighed and she swore That she never would deceive me But the devil take the women For they never can be easy Mushering the doodle To my chamber, all far to take a slumber. I dreamt of golden jewels, and for sure it was no wonder. But Jenny drew me charge, and then she filled them up with water. Then sent for Captain Farrell to be ready for the slaughter. A shirring, the doodum da. Why fall the daddy oh? Why fall the daddy oh? There's whiskey in the jar. It was early in the morning, just before I arrived. Up comes a band of footmen and likewise Captain Farrell I first produced me pistol for she'd stolen away me rapier But I couldn't shoot the water so a prisoner I was taken Mushering the doodle-da Why fall the daddy oh why fall the daddy oh There's whiskey in the jar Now the some take the light in the carriages a-rollin' And others take the light in the Harley and the Bowler But I take the light in the juice of the barley And courting pretty fair maids in the morning bright and early Mushering the doodle-da Wank fall the daddy-o Wank fall the daddy-o There's whiskey in the jar If anyone can aid me, tis me brother in the army If I can find a station in Cork or in Killarney And if he'll go with me We'll go roaming in Kilkenny And I'm sure he'll treat me better Than me only sporting Jenny Washering the doodle-da White fall the daddy-o White fall the daddy-o There's whiskey in the jar Washering the doodle-da White fall the daddy-o White fall the daddy-o There's whiskey in the jar there you go. Can't wait a bit of that, can you? Aye. Brings back all my drinking days. Fantastic. <laughs> so, February 1986, um, my family packed up their bags uh, and we 
and got in a car and we drove to the ferry terminal in Belfast and we got on a ferry and um, we left the shores of Ireland. Um, as a child, that that's one of my most um, vivid memories of standing on the the, the, the deck of the ship, um, having never seen Belfast um, from that view before, um, watching my father um, completely break, um, crying his eyes out, um, leaving the city behind, leaving the country behind that he loved so much, uh, for a fresh start for us all. Um, that was 32 years ago. So that's 1986, sorry, 33 years ago, 1986. Um, and for me, uh, probably a life-changing moment. I think anyone who's left their country um, to go and live somewhere else, uh, it tends to be um, life-changing. Um, for me, leaving Ireland, um, I never expected uh, everything the way to turn out the way it did. Um, but I remember seeing the country from that, from that ship and seeing Belfast, I love looking at Belfast as we came in on the bus, seeing the lights over the city. Um, and all of a sudden I could see it from the shoreline. And it looked just as beautiful from the shoreline as I ever imagined. Um, and those are memories of, of Ireland for me. And 32 years later, I still feel um, that Belfast is my home. Ireland is my home. And I think if you ever speak to any Irish person, um, regardless of their... Um, lineage, their heritage, how many generations they've been left, um, uh, they will always feel Irish. There's always something within you that feels different. Um, and I, I want to explore that tonight, and certainly Niles here, who's um, next generation, um, obviously born in England, raised in England, um, hasn't, I think you've only been to Ireland once, haven't you? Twice? So, yeah. I think you've been yeah. twice. Yeah, I've had you twice. Um, so I, I'd like to understand why I still, after 32 years, it's probably a very topical conversation tonight, why well, I still feel Irish and not, not British. And let's just clear one thing up here as well, for all you diehards out there, just because I was born in the North does not make me British. Uh, and that's a very, I'm not going to go to, I promise you I'd never do politics tonight. I promised Rich and I promised Niall I wasn't going to do politics. But thankfully now I, can, I, I have an Irish passport and I very much firmly call myself an Irishman. Nothing wrong with people calling themselves British if they grew up in the north. That's entirely up to you. Um, I certainly feel Irish, and certainly when it comes to St. Patrick's Day, um, I, I get a certain amount of pride that all around the world, and it is all around the world, yeah. people are celebrating um, St. Patrick's Day. Um, and it's, it's fascinating. We just had a conversation in the kitchen before we came down here that we don't celebrate St. George's Day. No. There's something about St. Patrick's Day. What is it about the Irish that everybody loves? Do you want to answer that now? Do you know anything? Any ideas? I mean, I can't speak for the majority of the world. Uh, I can just see what I see. And it's more... I mean, America, I think, have got it sorted out because um, oh, places like Boston and uh, I think we were saying that is it Chicago that has the New River? New York, Hungary? yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, um, their, their cities and their towns and their cultures and their their perceptions of immigration are all built on a lot of Irish and... Mm. Um, well, they're all immigrants, Americans, except yeah. for Native Americans. That it's an immigrant-built country, and the yeah. Irish were very prominent in building some of the most, you know, some of the most recognisable landmarks in American culture. And then Boston itself is just an Irish hub, yeah. full of you know, everyone there being Irish born and bred. And well, the Boston Celtics uh, still very much are proud of their of the, of of the Shamrock, yeah. proud of their heritage, exactly. proud of where they're from. And I think immigration straight away, we, we talk about um, immigration. What, what, something that I, I tried to say in the first couple of minutes there of when you leave Ireland, there's something that doesn't come with you. There's, some, there's always a part of you that stays in Ireland. And I think that's what uh, the immigrants uh, leaving Ireland, even back in the, uh, just after the Great Hunger, um, coming to, coming to, uh, going to America, um, there was a part of them still left behind. And I think that's... Uh, that's, mm. that's a testament to the, our little nation. But you very, it, it, it's and as an Englishman, um, we don't seem to be. Not I won't say not proud, but you, you look at Scotland, Ireland, Wales, they're very very proud of where they're from, and 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 like you said, St Patrick's Day is is a it's a global phenomenon, isn't it? Everybody, yeah. even is if it? even if I mean I've celebrated, I go out, I've been out on Paddy's Day, and. You know, 
it's very yeah but I, I, yeah there's a very clear identity very clear identity and it's something that's been that's been um hammered into us you know from the start that this is who you are and i think it's it's the small nation mm. syndrome you know we're a tiny little nation um with very few people there uh, compared to i think the north the same size as yorkshire mm. you know what i mean and, and probably more people in yorkshire than there is in the north um so it's it's one of those things that as for a small nation um i think we have to fight to keep that identity and one of the things that i was always very proud of 33 years later there's still a hint of an irish accent mm. i still managed to hang on it's not the belfast accent that i left ireland with but i still hung on to that little bit of an accent i must admit we've got um Karen, who, who uh, works for Marie at Nursery, um, her family are from Derry, and uh, you know, and I, I learned, you know, not London Derry. Um, well, depending <laughs> on where you're from, yes. Yeah, okay. no, no. Let's keep everyone happy. Tonight, yes, now. yeah, yeah. Let's not bring politics. No, into no, this. no, 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 no. But yeah, no. But um, it's Derry for me. Yeah, yeah, and it is to Karen and her family, and um, and it was interesting. Um, I was sat in the lounge, and they were all talking, and her uncle was talking to me. <laughs> and he needed subtitles. <laughs> I genuinely did not have a clue <laughs> what he was saying. And I'm looking at Karen and say, you know, help me out here. Well, it, you, it is, it is a, a quite a tear. And it's, it, it is, I'm not being, you know, but he, oh my God. And then we're like, we had the same situation with uh, uh, Mason, my eldest son. Uh, he was, he, we were in Belfast and Niall was there as well. And we're sat, he was sat talking to his granny. Well, Mason's from Barnsley. So Mason's speaking with a really broad Barnsley accent. Already a pretty hard accent to understand. It is, yeah. <laughs> I mean, my granny, um, my granny, although she was born in Liverpool, she was living in Belfast most of her life, um, and she had a very strong Belfast accent. And both of them looked around to me after the conversation. They were speaking to each other for five minutes. And granny turned around to me and said, what does he say? <laughs> <laughs> and Mason turned around and went, I can't understand the word she's saying. <laughs> so they were both having a conversation. But the, the, the accents are, are definitely, you know, one of those things that, that people, some people do struggle with it. And they're so very, so very different from the north and all the way down to the south. But I think, personally, um, the way we moved across the, the world um, and, and the way that we, I think Conor McGregor says it, we didn't, we didn't arrive in America to take part. Mm. We arrived in America to take over. Yeah, and even in Australia, we went over in the prison mm. ships to Australia um, uh, in, in the early days of Australia. Um, we didn't go there just to make up the numbers. We went there to make a difference. Mm. And we went there to integrate, and we went there to, to make sure we worked hard. And I think that's the thing that everybody loves about the Irish, is everywhere you go, uh, when, when you get there, you know that the Irish are gonna give you a warm welcome. Uh, they're going to welcome you with open arms, most of them, um, and, and they're going if if you want anything, they'll give you it, um, and they'll work hard for you. You know, I think that's something that's transferred all the way across the world, uh, and certainly, you know, New York, Boston, Sydney, Australia. When I went to Australia in 1995, um, uh, my uncle said, "Go down to the commercial pub on the rocks in Sydney, Australia, uh, and tell them you're Irish, and they'll sort your job out." And I was like give over that'll not happen and sure enough i arrived down in the, the rocks in sydney and i had a job within half an hour you know it's and it's one of those things i take great pride in that no matter where you go in the world the irish are always welcome so i think it is just a case of um despite the the, the recent history um, of, of the north um we're pretty welcoming but i think you've uh, i think it, it's you know work hard play hard i think is a good description of the irish you, you know you work you know you grafters and you like to play hard too you know <laughs> i hope you're not bringing out this one of the first stereotypes is he bringing out a stereotype already now <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> to tell us i'm gonna go well <laughs> of course yeah i mean we, we, we couldn't do a show about the irish without talking about the drink uh, and talking about the guinness and the talking crack. about the crack um uh, and it's one of those things that um I've got a love-hate relationship with this stereotype that we've got for the Irish. Obviously, because of my background as a recovering alcoholic, um, I do dislike the fact that we that St. That St. Patrick's Day is hijacked by Guinness. Yeah. It's hijacked by the breweries. It's hijacked by people just thinking it's all about the drink. Um, and it definitely isn't all about the drink, you know what I mean? There's a lot more to the, the history of St. Patrick's Day. But um, I think the, the overall um, message that the Irish give, yes, we do like a drink. Um, we like the party. Um, 
it's, but it's more family orientated. You know, you think w when you look at the Irish when they're going out drinking, it's families. You know, it's a lot of family culture. Um, brothers and sisters going out drinking together, um, families, entire families going out together, and sticking together. And I think that's possibly why um, w you know we love it so much um, because it is good crack when everyone gets out and the music starts going and you know you have a bit of the Dubliners playing. Uh, and all of a sudden people are having a few drinks and having a laugh and yeah it, it does get out of hand sometimes though i must admit um, i've had a few st patrick's day over the years where it's developed into st patrick's week <laughs> <laughs> all right but i must admit I've, I've been to dublin a couple of times and um i used to work on cruise ships and a, a guy one of sean um he, he lived there and he took me round not the not i went to temple bar and all that i don't get me wrong but he took he took me out of the city and some of the places and it's a beautiful country it's absolutely stunning um and the people are so and it, and again it's not been a stereotype but they're very very welcome you know and you don't always get that you know in other other countries even cities in england you know you can go and it's like you you come from mars almost yeah, you know? that's right yeah um, I, mean, I mean mother went back a few years ago and into her hometown in Homer in county tyrone and uh Walked into a shop, and the lassie behind the counter says, "Oh, how you doing? How's things?" And my mother was, you know, she'd been living in England for twenty years by that stage. She's like, looked at her as if to say, "Why are you talking to me?" And she'd forgotten that that's just the way they are. Mm. They just, they're genuinely they're not trying to sell you anything. They just, just want to talk. Just want to have a chat and have a, have a bit of crack. But going to Dublin then. So when, when you went to Dublin, have you ever been anywhere else in Ireland apart from Dublin? Um, no, uh, I haven't been to Northern Ireland, no. See, uh, this is this is the thing about the Dublin thing, and mm -hmm. you probably feel the same way now about Wakefield in London. Um, I, from the north, which I am, I'm a northerner. Mm. I'm a northerner in England, but I'm also a northerner in Ireland. Um, so coming from Belfast, I just don't like Dublin. I'm yeah. sorry. There's a something about the Dubliners. Yeah. Um, and being um, part from Belfast, which to me is probably the best city in Ireland, I'll be honest with you, anyone who's thinking about going on, on holiday, um, seriously consider going to Belfast for a weekend. Um, because Dublin gets, for for obvious reasons, through the troubles, um, Dublin was obviously the place, the safest place to go. If anyone was going to Ireland, go to Dublin. Um, certainly if you came from England. But since the you know, peace treaties and all that, everything's finished. Um, going to Belfast now is probably, it's probably the best city in I'm going to say Europe for a, for a weekend away. Everyone I've spoken to, the bars, the history, the tours. Um, you're uh, you know a half an hour's drive off the Antrim coast, which is probably some of the nicest coastline in 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 the world. Um, you know, going out to the Giants Causeway in Port Rush. Mm. Do you remember the Giants Causeway now? I do. It was That's the only thing I remember about Ireland. <laughs> I, I I remember little bits and pieces, but the Giants Causeway is the one thing that like I vividly remember. It was brilliant because I remember the story that I was told as to as to why I, the Giants Causeway was a thing, and it was it's it's pretty interesting. Hold play. on, it's not a story out now. That's the truth. Oh yeah, no, sorry, my bad. To all the listeners, <laughs> <laughs> to all the listeners that wait, wait, go on. Can you can you remember the story, Finn McCool? Um, I think uh, it was something to do with a fight. I can't remember, and then um, the bits and pieces of it, I can't remember the story itself fully, but I do remember you telling me that uh, we were like I was so tall at the time because I was a descendant from one of these giants, <laughs> yes. and, uh, and, and I was like, oh, wow, that's amazing. You and are then, a descendant uh, yeah. from Finn McCool. And then now, <laughs> now I just realised that I'm just freak of tall, and that's just a natural thing. No, no, don't believe it. <laughs> You're a part of the Irish heritage. That's, that's it. it. You share lineage to the, the Irish giants. That's it. Uh, yeah, a giant fight between the Irish giant and the Scottish giant, uh, and all of a sudden we have the Isle of Man, mm. which is the same size as Loch Ness. So who, coincidence? I think not. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> but honestly, the Giants Causeway and all, all around that area is just absolutely spectacular. Um, and for me, if, if you're going there, obviously Galway and Cork and Kerry and all those traditional mm. places to go for Ireland. But um, I think so many people, unfortunately, due to the troubles, um, missed out on the north and missed out on what's, what's available up in the north. Um, lots of fishermen go into the Fermanagh Lakes and places like that, and, and they said some of the best fishing they'll ever have. Um, so for me, uh, if you are thinking about going to Ireland, um, 
consider going up north. Mm. I don't work for the Northern Irish Tourist Board, mm. by the way, uh, but I, I do. I, I, it saddens me that so many people go to Ireland and miss out on, on Belfast, and especially the history of Belfast. Um, you know, the troubles, dark as they were, did create some, some history, um, and, and there's lots to learn. Uh, certainly if you come from England and don't know much about it, um, it there's lots to learn about a part of your um, uh, you know a part of Ireland that um, that's that's missed so often so there you go so um I want to break for a song because I want to talk about a little bit about the sport afterwards and the different types of sport and how we feel as as a nation now that I've chosen this song this is a bit of a blackguard song uh, by Christy Moore uh, and for all you youngsters you'll not remember uh, the European Championships of 1988 in Germany when Ireland were drawn against England and England at the time were the team to beat. They were the, the best in the business um, and Ireland were given no chance. Uh, so Christy um, decided he was going to write a song about that trip to Germany and this one's called Jockster Goes to Stuttgart. Enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was in the year of '88 in the lovely month of June when the gadflies were swarming and dogs howling at the moon. <laughs> on heat on the front here. How it rose, three beads and sandwiches for Stuttgart we began. Joxer packed his German phrase book and jump leads for the van. Oh, well, some of the lads had never been away from home before. It was the first time Wacker put his foot outside of Vinchicor. And before we left for Europe, we knew we'd need a plan. So we all agreed that Joxer was the man to drive the van. In Germany, the Autobahn was like the long mile road. There was every make a caravan I'll carry in the full load. Four transits and high aces and an old Bedford from Tralee. With the engine overheating from long haul and duty free. <laughs> well, there was fans from Ballyfermot, Ballybuck and Ballymon. On the journey of a lifetime, and a crack was 91. Well, Joxer met a German's daughter on the banks of the River Rhine. And he told her she'd be welcome in Bally Farm at any time. A big falsch road for him. And as soon as we found Stuttgart, we got the wagons in a ring. A Sean Oak got out the banjo and Peter played the mandolin. Oh, there was fans there from everywhere attracted by the sounds. And the first flag you in Europe, and jocks are past the flag and round. But the session it ended when we finished all the stout. The air mattresses inflated and the sleeping bags rolled out. As one by one we fell asleep, Gioxer had a dream. He dreamt himself and Jack Charlton sat down to pick the tea. Gioxer <laughs> dreamt they both agreed and Packy Bunner stirred away. And that Moore and Whelan and McGraw were certainly to play. Uh, but tempers they began to rise, patience weren't in. Jack wanted Cascarino, but Joxer wanted Queen. And the dream turned into a nightmare. Joxer stuck the head in Jack. Who wanted to bring Johnny Giles and him and Dunphy back? How oh, well, the cock crew in the morning? It crew but loud and shrill. And Joxer woke up in his sleeping bag many miles from Arbor Hill. Next morning, none of the experts gave us the slightest chance. They said that the English team would lead us on a merry dance. Oh, with their Union Jacks, all them English fans for victory they were set. Until Ray Houghton got the ball and he stuck it in the net. Hey! Thank you! Lovely. You're a marvel. What happened next is history brought tears to many eyes Oh, that day will be the highlight of many people's lives <laughs> Well, Joxer climbed right over the top and the last time he was seen 
Well, Sam and Arm with Chuck Charlton singing revenge for Skippery. And a whacker's back in Inchicore, he's living with his mam. And Jack Charlton has been proclaimed an honorary Irish man. Now yeah, listen, do, do you remember the German's daughter and the banks of the river Rhine? Lord Jesus, didn't she? Didn't she show up in Bally Farm at last week? And... <laughs> Oh yeah, boys, yeah. <laughs> 1988. Tell you what a day that was. Do you remember that championship? I do, I do. Oh man, I was out in the street. I was living in Renthorpe at the time, and I went out in the street as a, as a, you know, uh, 88. I'd have been how old would I have been? 14 year old boy, out in the street with a tricolour, jumping around the street, and all the all the neighbours like looking out the window, going, "Who's that lunatic there?" <laughs> um, absolutely fantastic, a great day. I bunked off school to go and watch it because it was on a bit a little bit earlier. But uh, there you go. So um, Ireland have always been the underdogs, but no matter where we go, um, you know, the, the Italian ninety, the support was just phenomenal. Mm. Um, now you won't remember Italia 90. Sorry, mate. I'm going to stay out of this part of the... I have no idea what's going to be said. Oh, talking about sport? Yeah. Oh, I tell you. That's English, isn't you? It's going to zip my mouth. <laughs> That's English, isn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but, uh, the support that we had in Italia 90, and everywhere we go, um, great support. Uh, often brought with the drink as well, you know mm. what I mean? That, that goes hand in hand. But again, we seem to be the team that's um, it's loved by everyone. Um, you know, it's always been uh, it's always yeah. been the way. You know, I'm sure uh, I often get this said to me um, in any World Cup, and and sadly Ireland hasn't been in, in the last couple of World Cups. But people often ask me the question, why don't you support England in the World Cup? We support Ireland. And my answer to that is nobody asked you to. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're all right. We can support ourselves. We don't ask you to support us. Um, I certainly yeah, can't support England. Sorry, guys. I can't return the favour on that one. In, in the World Cup, I've got 31 teams to support. <laughs> Anyone but England. And it did make me laugh when we had the World Cup in the summer. And, uh, you, 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 Croatia. Did you, buy, did you buy a Croatia shirt? Or I've got a Croatian yeah. cup. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> One of my friends brought me a Croatian <laughs> cup because, uh, yeah, I, and it's it's done with tongue in cheek. Um, I think uh, it's uh, it's important to remember that a lot of the stuff that I say about um, England, um, I have got four children here. I have settled here. I've lived here for thirty three years. Um, I'm, I, I I said this on the show before. I class myself as a Yorkshireman um, more than anything. Uh, I, I'm 100% proud to be a Yorkshireman, but um, Ireland is where my heart is. Um, I will never, you know, be carry a British passport or, or call myself English or anything like that. But um, I'm certainly um, a Yorkshireman first and foremost, and an Irishman is where the heart is. Mm. And I'm very proud to be here, you know. So it is tongue in cheek a lot of the stuff we say about the sport and about everything else. But having said that, Six Nations at the weekend, Ireland playing Wales, we beat the Welsh. The Scottish speak the English, You've Ireland won the Six Nations. Yeah. Am I dreaming there? I think that's probably a pipe dream. There you go. Niall's just switched off completely now, haven't you, Niall? Uh, yeah, as I said, yeah. I'm not going to get involved. I'm not gonna... It's not even, not even shown right. the slightest I, interest there. I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring Niall back into this. <laughs> um, when we were talking before the the show started, we were just talking uh, about um, literature and. Mm. Um, you told me a fact that I didn't actually know, so over to you on that particular fact. All right. Um, well, we've all we've all heard the story of Dracula, I believe, uh, written by one Bram Stoker. And you'd think with the setting of Dracula, you'd think the author would be from somewhere like Transylvania or somewhere mm. like that. No, the Bram Stoker turns out Bram Stoker's Irish, Irish oh, through and through. I couldn't believe that when you told I me. That. I never knew that. I never knew that. Yeah, so one of the most classic, one of the most classic pieces of literature, one of the most influential pieces of literature, one of the most important pieces of literature, was written by an Irishman. 
There you go. So every day is a you school sound, day. You sound surprised by that now. Don't forget, we have people like Oscar Wilde and Joyce and oh, a few get, other you got to think, and, the Americans take yeah. all the credit for writing instead yeah. of the British. Yeah. And, and then you sort of realise that some of the best, most influential pieces of work are written by Irishmen. So, got... so when we have things like Oscar Wilde and Bram Stoker and people like that, mm-hmm. why do you think it is then the Irish get the reputation for being stupid? Any ideas? Well, I don't think that's a... Is that a, yeah yeah is that yeah I mean yeah. yeah I mean going back the, all the jokes and uh, English Irish Scotland it always the Irishman was always the butt of the joke yeah um, I think I'm from a time now where that's not really the case so I, I can't really see that like I can't see the stereotypes as clearly the only stereotypes I get is that you know the drinking thing that's about it yeah. but I think nowadays when a lot of issues stem deeper with different communities. It's hard to see all the stereotypes at once. Mm. So maybe I'm just missing something on, on yeah, that. Maybe we're the forgotten immigrants. Yeah. You know, everyone forgot about us. Maybe, yeah. You know? I think, yeah, it could yeah. be a different thing. I mean, we're not going to get into that, but, you know. Plus, um, plus PC and everything else are political. Politically correctness, easy for yeah. me. So. Are you I sure you're English? <laughs> <laughs> um, you think uh, of being your I first know. language, you'd be able know. to use it, wouldn't I you? Know. I know. <laughs> I'm thick with a capital F. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it is. I mean, certainly when I was uh, when I first arrived over here, um, the, being an Irish kid in, in England, mm. you were the butt of most of the jokes. Yeah. Um, the Irish were seen as being just a bunch of. Um, navvies. I think that's probably where it comes from. Mm. We, we dug the dug, dug the canals out, and we dug the, worked on the roads, and you know, and we were we were portrayed as being this subspecies mm. um, for a lot of years, and certainly from the 1800s, we were almost seen as the underclass, um, and it was one of those things that you know, um, maybe that's what kicked in. But I'm glad to hear now from your generation that that that's not the case you know, I mean, it's 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 good in some sense, but it's also because we've we focused on a lot of more extreme versions of different discriminations that have actually, yeah. you know, started killing people in different communities, which is obviously not the best thing in the world. But at the same time, I think our perception of discrimination sort of dwindling gradually. Yeah. So things like the stupidity of the Irish, I don't see that anymore because studying literature for a while when I was in college, some of the greatest writers were Irish and some of the greatest actors and some of the greatest creative minds have been Irish. Yeah. I mean, John Keats, for example, studied a lot of his poetry and the, the complexity and stuff like that and the and some of his you know more visceral works, you, you sort of think, well, you have to have lived in Ireland to sort of have that imagining of beauty because the place is... I mean, I've only been twice and I always think it's one of the most charismatic places in the world. You get there and it's... It's like something. It's it's an aura that doesn't exist anywhere else. You could go, mm. and I was like, it's like being at home. I don't know. Like it, it makes sense to me to be there. Ah, it's weird, yeah. You see, I, we said this last week, and you didn't believe me. I'm telling you now, yeah. there's something inside the aura, you. The aura is there. So I think writing there and living there and having to experience all of that must have been a, a tumultuous thing for any sort of writer, you know, to or any sort of creative mind to grow up in an area that's that beautiful to just look at every day and write about that and but also so harsh as well oh yeah some of the stories and, and, you know, some of the writers had i mean there was a there was a chronicle from one of the i forget uh which writer i actually think no it's from a hosier song hosier another irish creative mind who's doing well at the moment um he wrote a song about a hillside where there were there were burials up there in the hills and there was that many of them that it was recognised there as just being a place to go. It wasn't. It wasn't an official graveyard or anything like that. It was just a burial ground that was sort of re- like special in a way that graveyards even weren't. And he wrote a song about that. And is that I think I'm imagining that sort of darkness and, and the beauty of that as well it was very very complex. Yeah. And the yeah. darkness is definitely something we've got. Um, any anyone who's listening who's got Irish heritage will know that we we have a very black humour. There definitely is a, a darkness about the humour that the Irish have got, certainly in the north, mm-hmm. um, and I think we developed that through the recent troubles. Um, but in the south as well, there's a dark humour because w- we had so much poverty for so many years. Ireland's one of the poorest nations around. Obviously, we had the Celtic Tiger uh, in the 2000s, but before that, we were the poorest of the poor, um, I mean, Dublin, we talk about Dublin being a beautiful city. The poverty that was in Dublin and surrounding areas was phenomenal. Mm. Um, uh, certainly in the, and during the Troubles in the 80s um, and 70s and 80s up in the north, 
Um, certainly where I was from in Belfast, unemployment was, was, was rife. So there's a lot of darkness surrounding the country as well. Um, after the, the, the hunger as well in the 1840s, um, yeah, we had to develop some sort of a, a mechanism, a coping mechanism. And a lot of the music tends to be a bit darker as well. Mm. It tends to be a little bit more uh, about the harder times. Um, and it's actually the, the next song that I've chosen, and I'm going to squeeze, try and squeeze as many songs in as I can tonight. Um, a, a song by the Saw Doctors called Every Day. The reason I've chosen this tonight, and I, there was somebody asked me to put on a Saw Doctor song tonight, Joanne. Um, w uh, the reason I, I chose this one is that Ireland last year um, repealed the Eighth Amendment, where Irish women could go uh, could, could go to the doctor if they wanted to and have a termination of pregnancy. They then had a choice. Up until that time, women didn't have a choice in Ireland. And I'm very proud of the fact, um, regardless of your religion or your political views or anything like that, I'm very proud of the fact now that in my country, um, our women are allowed to make decisions that you can make in the rest of the country. Mm. Uh, now, there's still problems in the north. We're still fighting for that one. But in the south of Ireland, women now have the choice um, if they find themselves in that situation, they have choice. And that's something they never had before. And that comes from the, the bad old times of Ireland where it was very authoritarian, uh, run by the Catholic Church. I think we're starting to break free from that hold um, of the Catholic Church, even though there's still a very Catholic country. And there's good things about that. But it also brought with it the bad side of being part of the Catholic Church. And I'm glad now that we're starting to break free from that. So um, this is the next song. It's called By the Saw Doctors, and it's called Every Day.
so uh, beautiful song by the Saw Doctors. I've actually uh, saw the Saw Doctors. I was reminded of that uh, by Joanna, Joanna uh, Harren, who was on Facebook today. Um, I saw them in the Apollo in Manchester. They go, I can't even remember the gig. You know what I mean? It was sober at the time. Really? Just, yeah, sober, but um, went to the gig. Just can't remember it. You know what I mean? Memory is absolutely terrible. Um, but it is, uh, I'm really proud of the fact the country is moving forward in everything mm. they do. Um, uh, and, you know, pretty progressive these days. I remember it being pretty, you know, not so progressive. Uh, certainly back in my day, it was, um, everything was done by the church, you know. Mm. Uh, believe it or not, I was uh, I was very heavily involved in the church. I know you can't believe it, but I was an altar boy no, for no, many no. a year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I served on the altar for uh, for plenty of, t- plenty of time. Um, a big part of my life, a big part of most young Irish lads' lives, you know, was the church. And for me, it definitely was a, a good time for me. Anyway, there you go. Um, immigration. Dirty word. Mm. Uh, it is a dirty word. No matter what you say, immigration is a dirty word. But um, I, I'm, again, and I use, I'm going to use this word quite a bit this evening. It's proud. Very proud of the way the Irish have, have migrated across the world mm. um, and integrated into societies. Not always as smoothly as they probably should have done. Um, I think if you go back to, if you watch films like Gangs of New York, have you watched that now? I have, yeah. Your verdict? Enjoy it? Yeah, I think, well, Daniel De Lewis is the whole reason that film's good. Yeah, he is. To me, he, he carries that entire arc and the storyline. And But it, even he's, the whole dynamic between him and the Irish group that Liam Neeson represents is, yeah, yeah. you know, it's quite an interesting thing of how the 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 Americans it's I always found that interesting with the Americans they seem to forget they're from immigrant backgrounds mm. yet all of them claim to be pure Americans in that film and I'm like well you can't be because Native Americans are pure Americans no one in that is pure American I think I think so it's, it's it's the narrative you've been told and the, the, yeah, the narrative you believe very very and I think uh, that's important to, uh, for for everyone to to listen to that is that you know when the Irish arrived in the in the 1800s. Um, and then again in the in Australia in the nineteen sixties, um, arriving to a place where some people didn't want them. Um, but you know, when you look back at what they did, and it's not just the Irish immigrants; I mean, the Italians, the Germans. I watched the thing last night on on uh, uh, prohibition in America, and the influx of Germans. They came over, uh, and and they just love making beer. Hmm. See, you forget that the Germans. That's what they did when they first arrived in America. It was about making beer. Uh, and made, became very wealthy doing it. Um, but the immigrants, uh, when they arrived in a new place, um, everyone said they were full. All countries say they're full. And I think that's something just to remind you, I'm reminded of when, I'm, when I listen to the conversations about immigration, is that you know the Irish still managed to go to America, go to Australia, um, come to England, and we did all right. And we, we actually added to the country lots of immigrants add to your country i think that i think the conversation now is a different one to when we were when the immigration was was being done back in on at like the 1900s until like maybe 1980 or 1990 um because back then that we had the big discriminations of everyone regardless of anything just if you weren't a specific thing it wasn't about color and stuff back then it was about just general social status more so Nowadays, the conversation is more of a race thing now. Mm. So the Irish have had such a, such a difficult time in the 1900s and late 1800s, or then up until about 1980, 1990. But since the prevel, you know, the, the, you know, the prevel times of, of racism in colour, immigration, and then obviously the uh, 9-11 attacks and stuff like that, it seemed to have shifted. Mm. And the focus has been spread from general to specific groups of people who Mm. immigration has become a difficult thing but saying that it's not like i'm not saying that the irish didn't have a horrible time obviously you 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 know the irish had a horrible time and you try being a kid in the 1980s exactly coming from belfast to to wakefield um, we we weren't that welcome yeah it's just the the conversation now it when we read headlines and we read about um you know difficulties of Groups being attacked and you know hate crimes against certain groups. Mm. Not you. I, I beg to find a, a headline that is about an Irish kid being attacked these days. You know, yeah. for for being Irish, it is very very specific the the discrimination that we've got now. So 
for an Irish perspective, that's that's good. You know, that's the it's obviously not brilliant. It's not mm. ideal, but it's good that the Irish haven't been subjugated for the whole entire immigration. I think span. The, I think the point I'm trying to make though is, is give them. Um, so we've learned that w- when we arrive in a country, we can pr- we can provide um, something to the country. We can add value to your country, uh, and I think it's we're too quick to judge certain um, races and certain um, nations when they arrive in our country. Let let their work do the talking. Mm. Let them let let us see what they can do before we judge them. Before you judge anyone that comes into your country, l- let's see what they can do for as a nation um, before we jump on the bandwagon saying country's full because that's the that's the thing we shout all the time and we certainly said it in the 70s when the irish came over in the 70s 60s and 70s the country's full but it actually wasn't mm. we came over to do jobs that were were needed uh, and we and we worked damn hard to do it you know so i think that's the point is just just give people a go uh, because you can add value and you're still getting value in america um and uh, one of the next band i'm going to play because i'm trying to squeeze as many songs in as i can tonight um is irish american band uh, drop quick, drop kick Murphy's. Uh, very proud of the Irish roots, Irish heritage, but very much American. Uh, and this is Rose Tattoo. The story this life had many shades. I'd wake up every morning, and before I'd start each day, I'd take a drag from last night's cigarette that smoldered in its tray. Down a little something, and then be on my way. I traveled far and wide, and laid this head in many ports. I was guided by a compass, I saw beauty to the north. Tales of many lives and wore the faces of my own. I had these memories all around me, so I wouldn't be alone. Some may be from showing up, others are from growing up. Sometimes I was so messed up and didn't have a clue. I ain't winning no one over. I'll wear it just for you. I got your name written here in a rose tattoo. In a rose tattoo. childcare for over 22 years. Situated on Eastmore Road, we are close to the M1 and M62 motorway network and also convenient for Wakefield City Centre, schools and major places of employment. 
For more details, check out our website at www.collegegonursery.co.uk or give us a call on 01924 200 120 to arrange a visit. College Grove, a special nursery which takes a hand, opens a mind and touches a heart. I love that advert. It's a pretty good advert, that one. Yeah, um, yeah just had something on Facebook from, is it Karen? Yeah. All about the Wolf Karen. Tones. Now, um, for those of you who don't know, the Wolf Tones are a band from Ireland who are um, on the, on the I'll, I'll call it Revel music. Um, so, sorry, Karen, I would <laughs> love to play um, you know, the, the men Wolf behind Tones the wire. Are, the Wolf Tones are the Irish Rage Against the Machine. Yeah, <laughs> I would love to play the men behind the wire or something along those lines or come out your black and tans, but I better not because <laughs> I'll get myself in trouble. So, no, Karen, maybe we'll do an Irish show that we could just yeah. do. Um, some rebel music, but then again, we'll get shut down. Um, uh, I just wanted to mention as well, um, if you're not doing anything on Sunday and looking for something to celebrate Irish culture, um, the Leeds Irish Day Parade um, is on uh, Sunday at 11 o'clock, uh, starting at Millennium Square. Um, I've been to that a few times now, and it, it, it's great to see that so many people coming together in, in, in Leeds. The Irish community in Leeds is, is still very strong, um, huge parade. Um, and, and plenty to do. So if you're if you're interested in seeing a bit of Irish dancing, listen to a bit of Irish music, get yourself down to Leeds on uh, on Sunday. Sadly, I can't be there because I've got something else on, uh, but uh, it should be a good day. Um, Dropkick Murphys, um, good song. Enjoy that. Solid, yeah. yeah I liked yeah. it. I, I do like the, their their vibe from America and mixing it in, and still quite still staying uh, keeping that American vibe as well with it. You know, so it's uh, it's all very good. Um, Right, we're going to come to the end of the show. I can't believe it's been an hour already talking about Ireland. I think we should have done this for a three-hour special. <laughs> um, and, I, and I might put in a request that we do just an Irish show once a week of just playing Irish music and talking all things Irish because it's been good crack. Because there's so much to talk about, so many different things. Yeah. And we haven't even touched politics. And if you're getting an Irishman talking think, about politics... I don't think politics is a good one to touch on, to be well, fair. Well, funny you should say that, because guess what I'm doing next week. Um, you see, we're coming to the end of March, and yeah. I don't know if anybody's heard about this thing, um, this thing called Brexit. Has anyone heard of this? Oh, God. Some, some might say that immigration was a key part of Brexit. And they, they, they some might to, say that, yeah. and they yeah. probably... I mean, yeah. I mean, to be fair, I'm the generation that's going to suffer everything that everyone decides, so I've <laughs> never heard of it. You know, I'm, I've never heard of any of these things, you know. It's not like my opinion matters. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you see, and that's why I want to do it, because it gets everybody's heckles up straight away. So I think next week, um, depending on, on what everyone else thinks, I think next week we're going to do a Brexit special, yep. um, because I would like to just get, on to, get into it, because I've got yes. my own views on Brexit. Um, and I have refused to speak about Brexit. I don't want to talk about it really, but I suppose we're well, coming so close to um, the exit date. Um, let's let's have a good conversation about it next week. So um, I'll pre-warn you now. Next week, let's get the questions fired in. Let's tackle every subject known to man about Brexit. Um, let's have an Irishman's point of view on Brexit because let's be right about it. It's the Irish fault that you're not getting out. <laughs> nobody the thought about us, did they? The back door. <laughs> yeah, nobody thought about the backstop, did they? Nobody thought about the border. Um, so uh, there you go. There are no borders in my country. <laughs> See, I've already started a row already. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to Brexit next week. Um, I've really enjoyed the Irish show tonight. Um, remember to, uh, you know, Get your shamrock out. I've got some growing in the garden, so I'll have my shamrock war on Sunday. Um, get the flags out. Um, if you are going to go out and partake of a Guinness or two, um, remember my famous saying, everybody likes a drink, nobody likes a drunk. Um, and just, you know, be sensible. Make sure you've organised yourself a trip home, uh, a, you know, a taxi. Uh, don't be driving. Take it sensible um, and, uh, and behave yourselves. Uh, we're going to finish with a bit of uh, Planksty. This was sent in by uh, Neil Smith. Uh, he wanted a bit of Planksty playing. And again, I'd never heard of Planksty, to be honest with you. Have you ever heard of him? No. Nope. No. Nope. All right, so this was uh, um, a, a last-minute request. I thought I'd just try and squeeze it in. Um, I, I, I take it we're out of time now, aren't we? Well, we're just coming up to the last five minutes, but yeah, we're a bit six, four minutes thirty is this particular song. So, there you so. Go. so we'll play a bit of Planksty. Now, thanks for your input. 
Yeah, good to be here. We'll talk um, about sport afterwards. Yeah, and th- hey, and thanks for the uh, the education on the. Uh, Very welcome. It's Bram Stoker. It took a five minute Google blown. earlier today. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said earlier, every day is a school day. Rich, as always, thanks, man. No, thank you. And don't forget, if you've missed this or any other show, you can go to www.smileradio.co, click on demand, and download the podcast. This is Raggle Taggle Gypsy to finish the show. See you all next week for a bit of Brexit. And obviously, keep the faith. Always. <laughs> There were three old gypsies came to our hall door They came brave and bold, he yo when this one sang hoy And the other sang la ho, when the ladies sang the raggle taggle gypsy he yo It was upstairs and downstairs the lady he went Put on her suit of leather for low It was the cry all the round her door She's away with the raggle taggle gypsy he yo it was late that night that the Lord came in, inquiring for his lady he o The servant girls reply he to him all she's away with the raggle taggle gypsy see he o Up and saddle for me, me milk a white steed, me big horse is not speedy he o I will ride and I'll see he me bride, she's away with the raggle taggle gypsy see he o Oh, then he rode east and he rode west He rode north and south the whole so oh, But when he rode to the way he'd up and feel It was there that he spied at his lady he go Oh, then why do you leave your house and your land? Why do you leave your money he go? Oh, why do you leave your coroni with the door The whole for uh, the raggle tackle gypsy he go You're a what do I care for me house or me land? What do I care for my honey he oh, away you're a what do I care for me only but that lord I'm away here with me raggle tackle gypsy he oh. Well it was there last night you the goose got their bed with blankets drawn so calmly he oh tonight he you lie in a what he up and field in the arms of your raggle tackle gypsy he oh. You're a what do I care for a goose feather bed With blankets drawn so calmly he o Tonight I lie in a one heat up and field In the arms of me raggle tackle gypsy he o Oh for you rode east when I rode west You rode high when I hear a hold low I'd rather have a kiss of the yellow gypsy lips Than all that the cash is money he o